guys, it's your boy Sasa here with a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop slash After Effects tutorial today, bringing you guys a really cool, I guess we're going to call it like Behance presentation or or just kind of like upgrading or making your, we're revamping your portfolio, sure. Um, I'm currently working on a project I'm really looking to get featured on, um, which I'm trying to do my dang best. Um, but basically, it's just basically, I'm just trying to look for you guys to get your presentation up there, right? And your uh, Behance portfolios, whether it be this really cool logo shot I'm going to show you guys how to do, how we can use it for not just logos, you can use it for like a title, like a title header for when it goes, uh, let's say you have logo folio V3 or whatever or whatnot, would we have like a nice shimmer there because it's not only about the presentation, or excuse me, not only about just the, the quality of work that's in your actual project, but there's a lot in the presentation to get featured, so I'm looking to try to get one myself to have it under my book. Um, I'm just going to be showing you guys some of the things that I'm going to be person be doing and hopefully you guys would address it and kind of use it yourself so as you guys saw before that's that cool little logo sort of shine where I have it flipping afterwards a little bit to kind of get this really cool I guess transformation and make it just look like it's looping very well um but yeah it's really cool and afterwards I'm just gonna show you a nice simple way to kind of get a really cool gift after effects to Photoshop to make sure it looks as good as possible in my personal you know how I'm gonna go for it kind of thing you know what I mean so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today as always guys two likes on the video equals a secret down below which most likely the PSD or the after effect file whatever maybe even both of them um for the tutorial today so let's just get this thing going and uh yeah let's just let's just check this thing out and I, I guarantee at least three of you are gonna love this if not you got to just watch and then you're gonna love it okay I promise <laughs> All right, homie. So first things first. Here is the actual comp file that I have going on for you guys. So this is basically the sort of little cool shine. You can see the little shine. It doesn't. It's not actually pure white either. It's a really cool yellowish kind of a, I guess, a yellow hued shine with a really cool simple little spin to try, just trying to get like the whole gift and the thing, or I guess the uh, smooth transition thing going through and it just doesn't look so basic with just the shimmer itself. I feel like the spin gives a little something. However, of course, this is only two and a half seconds. So keep that in mind, guys. Like the whole all the animations and stuff stop at like two and a half seconds, and it's only. Three second long gif so for i guess for your presentation preview i would say anywhere between 10 seconds is a pretty good idea um for sort of reasons that's why i only use the three seconds so just make that sure that's just clear for you guys but as you can see it's very very cool very simple and it just will do so much wonders to your Behance portfolio, I believe, because I see it a lot and I'm not, you know, freaking like even my font, dude. I thought my font was going to totally, totally get that feature, but it didn't, but it still got a lot of traction, so we're okay with that. Okay, let's just go ahead and get this thing going then. So, I'm in a new composition. I just made a very simple, cool little, almost like a header sort of... um dimension wise your dimensions do not matter at all it's like, well it matters for your what you need to do you know what i mean i'm just going with a very simple sort of header kind of cut dimension um so yeah i'm gonna go drag in this little mech wolf png that i have currently and this is a premium that i did that's already sold but most of you guys probably know if you guys don't follow me on twitter then that's just your fault dude let's just shrink this down quite a bit I could have just fit it, let me just fit it because I'm just an idiot sometimes, but we'll just leave it right about there, that's fine. So first things first, your logo, right? Now if you're not going to use a logo, you can use a text, however of course I'm going to be using an actual back on today's video, so I'm going to just, just drop in a solid here, and then we're going to use the, uh, the line work black as the background. So let's just drag this below here and lock that background so you don't ever hit it again. So. Now we have our very, very basic little, uh, you know, our, our 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 screen, our our scene. There we go. So first things first is actually what is the lighting effect that we're using in today's video, and I believe it's called CC Light Sweep. Um, if I just go to Effects for some reason it's loading very oddly, but CC. If I just type in CC, you'll see under a not distort but generate, it's going to be CC Light Sweep. You can of course type in CC Space Light Sweep to get the actual effect popping up. Very simply, if I just go CC light sweep you'll see it right there but i want to show you guys where it actually is but we're going to take this and we're going to drag this right on top of our png and after of course when you first see it load in let's just put it on full for now <clears throat> when you first see it load in you're going to see that it's very just it's it's exactly what you're going to expect it to be it's literally the effect itself is just this right here this plugin itself but of course you can probably do some other cool stuff to make it look even cooler but for what we're doing in today's video that you guys saw this is all we did right so light sweep so of course, it's not going to do any animations on its own. We're going to, have to, of course, do a little bit of direction or uh, center and uh, positioning, you know, little simple little keyframes. However, first things first is looking to how you want to have your shape of your light be. Now, this sharp one here is actually pretty cool. It almost reminds me more of like a, a, a bezel, like a, not a bezel, but yeah, I think it's a bezel. Anyway, that's sharp, right? This is smooth. Personally, I think smooth looks quite honestly the best, but then you have linear, which is almost like a, uh, a more... 
I guess, spread more like motion blurred or blurred out more kind of, you know, like that kind of depth when you have more focus around the entire sort of, what am I trying to say? There is less like like line focus, you know what I mean? So you can't really see like a, a vivid line here. I mean, you can, but not as much as you see things here. Like there's a, there's a vivid, you know, center of attention. So with that being said, I personally think smooth is probably your best bet. Now, when it comes to width, <clears throat> it's of course the width of the actual light itself. Now you can make it super skinny, but that's gonna really not give you any effect that you kind of are looking for. You're looking for that light effect. So of course, leaving your width about where it was, or finding a nice little middle ground. I'll say like, let's, let's see what 32 looks like. Um, 32 looks pretty good, maybe even a little more. Let's just go at 40, 40 on the dot. I don't know if that was the actual, uh, my hair is wet, so the shower. Um, I don't know if that was the actual sort of uh, the default, but I'm gonna say 40 width is pretty good. Now, sweep intensity is really not to mess with that very, like too much at all. On um, the edge intensity at all, I wouldn't even really mess with this either personally, but the edge thickness is something you might wanna work with and see what kind of settings work with you personally. I'm just gonna leave it on a good old like 30. Right, so it's nothing hard whatsoever. Right there, that looks pretty dang good. It looks like a really nice, simple shine. I also love the fact that I have on my personal outline. It's a very simple glow here. But as you can see, you're not really messing around with too many settings because they don't really do as much as you really want them to do in a sense of um, the effect that you're looking for. So it's really very kind of like click and just go kind of thing. So with that being said, however, I have a really nice, almost like a yellowish tint. Now you already see me change the color because it didn't change from before because I'm in the same comp. Um, but as you can see, right, it's the white looks okay. Right, I'm not gonna lie, white looks okay. However, it's just like, I feel like just having that little bit of that yellow, you can choose any color you want. Personally, like, I'm not entirely, you know, a go-getter when it comes to like having color for a, like a light sweep, but maybe if you used a, um, like an actual text where it was maybe like a full white text, and you maybe was a, you wanna use like a blue sweep to go, go through it and whatnot, but I personally just see it as more of my, me choosing a yellow, right? Choosing the yellow that I use for the line, and then just bring it all the way up here so that way I have a nice very off-white um, with a yellow hue to it, which is really, really good personally. So that's what we're gonna do for sure. Um, so yeah, with that being said, that's about it when it comes to the actual settings for the actual light sweep. After that, we're just gonna be basically doing a very simple, um, you can choose your direction by the way. So for the direction, I'm kinda, I'm gonna have it like more or less following this line here. Um, Cause it's like the first line that you see. So I'm gonna try to find where that angle is. Um, We'll say so negative 50 is about where it where it's at. But it easy. you definitely change the angle, excuse me, direction. Uh, of course where it sweeps. But whatever like kind of goes, you can even have like a do a little cool little like a like a time sweep. You know what I mean? Like almost like a sweeping. No, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> you... <clears throat> those are one of those things that you I would usually cut, but I'm not down for it. However, <laughs> we're just we're just gonna go with it. You know, just a just a it's just a time sweep, okay? However, if you, that's not what you want to do, we're just gonna go ahead and go negative 50, right? So it's gonna be more or less on this angle here, maybe a little more. I can get a little bit. I see that's pretty okay. However, I don't want it to be too like you know coming in too awkwardly, but that's a pretty okay angle. So I'm just gonna follow the line, kind of stick with that line. That way, when you first see the light shine come in, it kind of feels a little bit better. But it really doesn't matter too much personally. But however, this still works. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm on a three second um, frame, so you can see my composition settings is at three or two seconds uh, and thirty seconds. So two seconds and thirty milliseconds. There we go. Press OK. So what I'm gonna personally do is I'm just gonna go ahead and first, first is first, we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and give ourselves a nice center. And that's about it. We can just use a, really just use a center uh, keyframe here. So of course center is what this thing is right here. If you wanna do it like, you know, with this here, you can literally just drag it, I believe, if you guys really want to just set it right off of where the actual logo is. So when that's done here, let's go ahead and go into about, uh, where's, that's two seconds, so this is one and a half seconds. It's pretty okay. Let's just drag this down here just like so and i'll create another keyframe for us so you can see it's a it's a very simple animation right but it does it does so much for some reason personally i think it just does so so much let me just quickly go ahead give ourselves a little preview here so you can see the preview is going to be very kind of like stagnant with the actual motion of how the actual law uh, the light is kind of like going through it's going to be very um there's going to be no sort of like finesse to it whatsoever that's where we're gonna be doing a really simple easy ease trick as well so you can see it's very it's very slow and methodical right now or just very stagnant if this is something you're you're down with it kind of looks very elegant in a way so maybe if you're doing something that has a really cool elegant logo presentation or whatnot this might be perfectly fine having that very nice smooth 
uh, transition with the animation is very simple and it's just very stagnant. It might actually work in some cases. However, I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna highlight these. Let me stop this, that's annoying. <laughs> Let's go ahead and highlight these two uh, little keyframes here. We're gonna right click onto the keyframe, go to keyframe assistant, and then we're just gonna go to easy ease. So if you guys already know before, once you use easy ease, it's gonna give ourselves the, uh, the option when we go to the graph editor here. And if your graph does not look like mine, it might look like this. I believe this one's the default in if you have never changed it before. Um, but just go ahead and just go to edit speed graph. Click on one of these points right here. And we're gonna do is gonna take this yellow and we're just gonna drag this to the left. And what's gonna happen here is, <clears throat> what's gonna happen here is, is basically it's gonna go very quick and then slower. So it's gonna have like a really cool, like, like I said, methodical kind of like motion to it. It's gonna feel very refreshed and kind of modern. So if I just go ahead and quickly go ahead and just re-preview this again, you'll see it, <clears throat> excuse me, it'll go very like fast and then kind of slow and kind of like fill, it'll just fill it way more better. In my personal opinion, uh, let's just see what it looks like now. So you can see how it goes fast and then slow. It's a way different kind of effect. There's a really, I don't know, it's a fine line between what you kind of want and what you're gonna get. So just definitely kind of work with it. You can go more slower and then fast kind of thing. But for me, I think this works pretty gosh darn well. So with that's all done and all being said, let's go ahead and show you guys really quickly how to do the little spin. That's just a little touch that I personally did that you might personally like as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a 3D layer. Right here, you see this little box here? This is a 3D layer, which this is gonna allow myself, if I just quickly show you guys as well. If I were to open this up, get rid of the effects, let's go to the transitions. So right now there's no sort of, right now if I wanna rotate it, what I wanna do is I wanna rotate it 360 degrees. However, I wanna rotate it on a plane, not actually with this rotation tool and whatnot, cause this is not what I want. I don't want to rotate on like a very simple 2D plane. I wanna make this a 3D layer, just like clicking right there. It'll give me now an, a Y and X rotation. I believe the X is what we need to change. I lied. I keep forgetting Yankees on the top. Remember that? Remember that from school? Um, if you're not a Yankees fan, then you probably definitely didn't know. You know what I mean? So anyway, press Y. So I'm going to press that Y rotation. That's the actual axis that I want to be on. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the keyframe or beginning of the timeline. Click on my keyframe for the Y rotation. I'm going to go into... Actually, that's a little bit too soon. I'm going to drag this maybe around one second. So right before I get to that 30 millisecond mark. Yeah, that's pretty good. So right there in the keyframe, I'm gonna go to the 30 seconds right here, and I'm gonna take this and just type in 360. That's all we're gonna be doing is a nice 360 degree rotation. However, you can do a negative 360, but I think this works best because I feel like once the line shines through, it's gonna then rotate on that same exact angle. And I think that looks pretty dang good. Now, if you wanted to do more of like a, uh, like let's say if I wanted to start spinning more and it gets almost this light right here, it gets like kind of close. If I just take these two keyframes and move it down a little bit, you'll see you can get that rotation going before even that light kind of fixes itself. You know what I mean? So we have this here and then light starts to go. You know what I mean? You can have it like do something like that. That doesn't look bad at all. However, it's a very, um, you know, what you kind of want to do def uh, definitely kind of thing. But I'm going to go ahead and just really quickly render it out to show you guys what it looks like. <clears throat> and all of its full, uh, full glory. Let's just see what it looks like. Just like so. And then boom. All right, so right there, you can see the, the spin itself is very stagnant as well, or very like stationary. It's not very methodical, like I said before. So of course, what we're gonna do is, you definitely guessed it, we're gonna go ahead, because it looks really disgusting actually, easy ease it, go to our graph, take our point, and drag it just like so. I'm gonna drag this one a little further in as well, and let's call this complete. Because <clears throat> we definitely want it to look slow at the end. That's still way too fast. Cause this is all one second. So if I just drag this maybe back to that 30 frames, that'll look a little bit better maybe. It looks so pretty okay. So this is only the issue that we're going with is cause it's only two and a half seconds and that's not, you know, that's literally nothing. There's no time for the animation to be completely finished. That's why I said for sure, make sure your composition settings um, are about like 10 seconds. So about maybe like 10 seconds here. So besides this two being here, put like a 10, I believe that's a really good ratio to kind of have, but for the sake of me doing the tutorial, and then of course showing us to make it a gift afterwards, I definitely want to make sure that you guys are in the clear and making sure that your animations are as, as clean as possible. So let that be known. However, this still does look pretty good and exactly how I kind of want it. But I believe that is basically in the whole kind of uh, little light sweep kind of version of it. So 
hopefully you guys enjoyed the little this part because we're gonna actually just go ahead and cut right over to a nice very simple um how to make a gift from after effects into photoshop and then upload it to uh behance to make it look like a like a nice cool header presentation so with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys how to make the gift and whatnot however as you can see this is a very very simple animation it looks really really cool though maybe if it was something like you're you're a pre-made designer like myself you might do some pre-mades every now and then and you want to have this not a stagnant image you want to have the logo look really cool and whatnot there's definitely a way you can just go ahead and tweet out a gift image with um you don't even have to have a gift image you can actually just be a uh what do you call it let me see just so I know what it is. Okay, please let me go to render queue, please. There we go. So it doesn't have to actually just be a, uh, it could be an AVI as well. That's what I was trying to say. So, or a QuickTime, that's fine as well. Twitter kind of handles all that stuff there as well. But let's just say those things are very, very clear and that it just doesn't mess with your, your distortion with the actual logo. It looks really good personally. And now I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking and move on to the whole uh, gift part. So give me a second, okay. All right, guys, so basically to go ahead and start off this whole little gift animation, we of course have to finish our After Effects part, basically, right? So we're gonna go ahead and just get this thing going. So you guys saw me do it before. However, to get this thing in your head, fresh and new, if you guys know how to render, all you gotta do is go to Composition and then Add to Render Queue. Once you have this here, you're gonna have these settings here, and I'm gonna start off with the best settings here. I'm not gonna change anything here whatsoever. However, if you have a, a certain reason to use a certain uh, frame rate, um, I would just say that it doesn't really matter whatsoever. I would just use your composition frame rate, uh, frame weight, <laughs> uh, because of course, when you made your composition, you of course made sure that your uh, dimensions and of course your frame rate, there was all in there. So I would say, keep that as is. If not, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you guys go to composition settings, when you made your own, as you can see here, you can use your frame rate that you choose to use. And I did use 60, but I believe no matter what inside the whole Photoshop thing, when it goes to that trend, transition it's gonna be at 30 no matter what personally that's what I think so because all my uh, little examples or all my uh, experiments that's how it happens so alpha module is a little bit different here so we're gonna go ahead and change this and we're gonna use two different things or excuse me you can either use two different things or you can use either JPEG sequence or PNG sequence the difference between them is if you guys had a transparent background I personally do not have a transparent background as you can see I have a, a very nice simple uh, blacked out like line work color for my background here. So I'm not going to be using J uh, PNG sequence. However, if you guys wanted to, if you had an actual transparent background, you would select PNG sequence. And if you wanted to, of course, extract that out of After Effects in that way, you go to channels and you go to RGB plus alpha. And that way, when you do render it out, it's going to be transparent background. You're all going to be good to go, right? So, however, I do not have a transparent background. So I'm going to be using JPEG sequence. And if you guys just check your channels really quickly, you'll see that there is no option for um rgb plus alpha and that's why i got and told you guys you know use e whatever one you want to use but personally I'm, I'm using a very nice solid um color so i'm using jpeg sequence and once that's all clear for you guys to go nothing else changes you're good to go so rgb jpeg sequence press ok output to and i have a folder here and my it's made another folder but tutorial and we're going to call this in this you know folder here uh well that's something different so let's just go ahead and make another new folder so i'm going to make this here and let's call this one um shine press OK that's another one Jesus and this one's gonna just call it shine just like so and then press save so in this folder is gonna be shine and once I press render it's gonna be very very quick as you guys will see in a second but I'm gonna go ahead and just open up Photoshop and get this thing going officially because for some reason After Effects love to eat up all my memory whatsoever that I have currently so I can't actually open up Photoshop without a crashing why tell me why like why After Effects is there a way I can reduce that let me know I love I would love you let me know anyway once i press render as you can see it's going to like be super super quick as you can see right there so i'm gonna hop into photoshop and show you guys how to actually throw it in there and get the thing going so that was loud i'm sorry i forgot i have my speakers on <laughs> all right guys now that you have photoshop all opened up and uh after effects is no longer eating absolutely all your memory ever so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to my folder here i have my other screen right here's the tutorial folder click on this and click on the first image here and just simply just drag it right into Photoshop. That way, all your, your documents and all that are kept the exact same. Um, if you even have like a tab open like this already, you can just take, uh, you know, the first image again. Of course, I have to take a second one because I can't take the same exact image and just take it. You can just drag over this dark bar right here and it'll copy over as well, just like so. Um, it really doesn't matter if you have something open or not. Just make sure you just drag it right in there, right? So also really quickly, edit, preferences, uh, interface is actually how I change my color of Photoshop. Someone asked me this. I saw two people like it. So of course you can use white, which is hell no. Um, gray, which is okay. This is like pretty basic, but then I use like the dark mode, like on Twitter and whatnot. So I think this looks the best. I know some of you guys asked me what would uh, how I did this. There you go, bros. I got your back. Anyway, if you guys actually have the timeline here, all you have to do is go to Windows Workspace and go to Motion. You'll have the exact same setup that I personally have right here, and it'll be good to go. So. 
once you have this here, I'm just going to unlock this layer right here. We're going to go to image. We're going to go to, uh, no, we're going to go to layer and we're going to go to video layers, new video layer from the file, just like so. Let's open up our other one we here. We have Shine Tutorial, right? You see this here? Just to click on the actual first one once again, right? So this is the first one to get your document size. So this actual um, layer that's on the right-hand side over here, it doesn't really matter whatsoever. However, if you press open here, Photoshop will automatically recognize that all the stuff in the actual folder was already a uh, little image GIF for you guys. So you can see it'll render out just like, so you can press space to kind of pre-render it just like After Effects basically. Right, and you'll see it kind of looks really, really just very simple and basic, right? And if you can just play it now again, you'll see how it works. So you get the same exact thing you had in After Effects inside Photoshop, um, but just a little more just cleaner, right? So I'm gonna take this image that we, of course, unlocked and delete that. That way this is no longer here, just like so. You can see that goes away. And you're basically pretty much good to go. Now, if I were to go to edit, and we're gonna go to, excuse me, it's file, export, save for web, and we're gonna go over here to the GIF, right? It's gonna take a little bit to actually load this thing here. You can see this little blue bar down here. It's gonna take quite a bit. Now I'm gonna currently, once I get this like at least somewhat loaded, how oh, come on, let's go. You wanna go a little bit quicker, please? You know what I mean? Um, And I'm gonna see the documents actually really quickly because I don't want it to be too big. So this is actually way too big. So this is five mega, you can see this five megabytes is quite a lot. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the actual average or uh, minimum or maximum for Behance is, but I think five megabytes is quite a lot no matter what. So I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna just cancel that. Go to image, image size, change this right here to percent. Uh, and we're gonna just change this width and height. Just you can just change one of them to 50% press OK, convert it. As you can see, it'll basically shrink the size for us. And that way, if we go back to edit, uh, excuse me, file, export, save for web, or if I do a lot, the reason why I forgot where the whole file and save for web thing was, is I just literally now just use, uh, I just press cancel. But I use control, alt, and shift basically to open this tab up now. I've literally not done this in a while. So I was, I was like a little bit clueless where it was for a second. However, you'll see in a second, once this loads, once again, you'll see that the actual document size will be lowered so very much, maybe about, it should be about two megapixels or like one and a half. Yeah, there you go. So one and a half megapixels, just like so. And that was just by simply just like kind of like dropping down the actual, uh, the document size by a little half, right? So that's pretty good. So of course you want to have this change to GIF. Uh, and we're we'll gonna have this one selected, that's perfectly fine. Colors, 256, if I were to lower this to 128, you'll see our size here will decrease once again. So if size is still a problem for you guys, <laughs> you can just still use uh, 256 if it's not. You know, you might have to render a couple times if it is or if it's not. However, 256 is perfect for me. I think one and a half megapixels, as long as I'm below two megapixels, I kind of go by like YouTube's like minimum, um, just so my documents are not crazy, you know, I don't have to re-render or whatnot, even though it doesn't take what's like long at all. Um, this is pretty much good, right? So I'm gonna press save. And I'm gonna save this inside, where is the okay folder? Let's save it inside Shine, we'll call this Behance. I don't need to make a new folder, but just so I know where it is when I actually do the little, little thing here. And we're just gonna take this and just call it Shine, press save. And then once I press save, it'll do the whole little like render thing here. Right? So if I were to go to Behance, open this baby up, I have quite a bit of uh, other things. Let's just go to create a project. Let's go to upload files. This is some client slash thumbnails I had to do. Uh, where is the folder? I believe it's this one. Nope. Go to our okay folder here. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to Shine, Behance, Shine right here, which is the actual file that we just rendered inside Photoshop. Press OK, and you guys will see, that if I go to, I'll uh, just preview it just like so, you'll see that this cool little header here now um, just has like a nice cool little animation going. So if you guys are wondering ever how kind of Behance does this whole little, uh, you know, rendering this really cool simple gift kind of make, just make it look a little bit cooler, make your presentations look a little bit cooler. I think this is pretty good. Honestly, this is still two, two and a half seconds or so, or three seconds. It doesn't seem that fast anymore, but I would say just shrink it down just a, quite a bit more, maybe even double. So I would say like six seconds or 10 seconds is a definite, a definite good kind of a uh, starting point when it comes to your, uh, your animation. So that is basically it. Hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. It was pretty cool, and I definitely I know we doing we're doing a lot of After Effects stuff, but when I kind of get back into it, I kind of love just figuring things out, showing you guys what I'm doing. That way, there's no there's never any I swear there's never any like um 
learning differences in the sense of uh, what I kind of do and what you guys see kind of thing. You guys kind of see everything that I'm going for. Of course, I of course do more and practice it more and more and more. That way I can actually do a tutorial on it and actually be, you know, at least somewhat accurate. But that's, that's something you should be doing as well. You guys should definitely still be practicing even though you see the tutorial once. At least practice it a couple times before you kind of like nail it, right? So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. And of course, two likes on the video is a secret down below, which will mostly be the AI file of this video here today, only because you don't really need the Photoshop document um, because it's literally pointless. It's just very simply just rendering it, right? You know what I mean? So um, hope you guys enjoy. Of course, don't forget to leave a like on the video, like I said before, just two seconds ago. And also comment down any video you want to see me personally do. And also follow me on Twitter at SissoHQ. And also, of course, check out my Selfie, Selfie.com slash SissoHQ for any pre-mades in packs as well as $5. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the tutorial, maybe even go to my website and go to feedback and tell me how much you like them. And if they don't, don't write anything because I might delete it because I'm a douche. No, I won't do that. I won't delete it. I swear. I've never deleted a comment yet besides one that was just very, he was just saying some words. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Much love to you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Since I you out, Jeff, keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking dope, guys. Later. Love you. Kisses. Bye.